time to do some basic research. It's not difficult, just minor research. You will understand the vacuousness, the emptiness of all the charges against me. Okay. They kept they kept switching the charges. Yes. They said I committed this crime in England, isn't it? Yes. I made a broadcast in England. Yes. And a nine charges leveled against me. This place where I committed this crime was London, United Kingdom. Yes. When my lawyers came to see me, to I defense. had a discussion with them okay. about how I'm going to defend myself. They removed it. I told them that no court in Nigeria has jurisdiction to try me. They removed that one. Since because, this. because since this offense was committed in England, so they said. Mm. It's only a UK court that can give a Nigerian court the authority to proceed, isn't it? Yes. Based on that, they now amended the charge again and, and removed remove London. Location of the broadcast. Location of the, of, of the broadcast. Contrary to section 196 of the Terrorism Prevention Act. Yes. 2022. In violation of their own laws. Yes. In violation of their own laws. And you want me to stand trial under such circumstances? Is that possible? No, no. they can't to stand trial where all these shenanigans are going on? It's not possible. Yes. Okay. Yes. No, 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 no. It's okay. Mr. Kamen, last one last question. Mr. one last question. With reference to what she has asked earlier, uh, just being made it known that she is one of the senior judges at in this court. Yes. What if? And I have respect and love for her. She knows. What if this case comes back to her because she said no other person? It is not possible. It is not possible. This, this this persecution of the Igbo people. This orchestrated. Almost global persecution of the people it of stops a with me. It cannot happen. Very well. It can never happen. No, that is why we do what we do. That is why I do what I do. I am campaigning for the freedom of my people because of the persecution that we are facing. Yes. It's as simple as that. Nothing more, nothing less. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. The rules change. Oh no, we are not using no names. Nali, Nali, bro. No, me, no name. So now we can't get any name. We can't get any. I love my people very much and they know it. I don't want all this, anybody involved. I've been hearing about idiots talking all over the place. Some fools trying to be relevant because of Biafra or trying to use my name to gain relevance. I don't want to. I don't want any killings, no kidnapping. All this nonsense are alien to us as a people. I don't know where these animals came from. They are taking advantage of the fact that I'm in detention. But it will, it will soon end. It will soon end. They, they, they know what IPOB stands for. IPOB is one family. Any idiot trying to leech on IPOB, trying to use the name of IPOB, trying to subvert the will of the people, our principles and our core values, that person has a lot to contend with when the time comes. You can run, but you can never hide. You can run and hide and be talking all manner of rubbish, but one day we'll catch up with you. The legal situation surrounding Namdi Kanu, the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra IPOB has intensified dramatically with recent developments that have raised significant concerns regarding his rights and access to legal counsel. Kanu is currently facing terrorism-related charges at the Federal High Court in Abuya, where the stakes have only escalated. Earlier this week, Kanu shocked the courtroom when he requested the presiding judge, Justice Binton Yako, to recuse herself from the case, citing a profound lack of confidence in her ability to provide a fair trial. Kanu's request marked a critical moment in the proceedings. His legal team, led by barrister Eloy Yimakar, articulated their client's concerns regarding the impartiality of the judicial process. This assertion is rooted in the broader context of Kanu's long-standing grievances regarding his detention and the nature of the charges against him, which many of his supporters believe are politically motivated. In a significant turn of events, Justice Nyako granted Kanu's request and officially recused herself from the case. This decision was not merely procedural, it reflected the growing tensions within the courtroom and the broader implications for Kanu's legal journey. Following her recusal, 
Justice Nyako remitted the case file to the chief judge of the federal high court for reassignment to another judge. This transition adds another layer of complexity to an already contentious legal battle, which has been marked by allegations of human rights violations and calls for justice from Kanu's supporters. However, the unfolding drama did not end with the judge's recusal. Following this decision, Kanu's legal team reported that the Department of State Services DSS took retaliatory measures by barring them from accessing their client. Barrister A.E. Mocker expressed grave concerns about this development, describing it as an isolation tactic aimed at undermining Kanu's legal rights. The DSS's decision to prevent Kanu's lawyers from visiting him raises serious questions about the treatment of detainees and the integrity of the legal process. Such actions could be viewed as a violation of Kanu's right to legal representation, a fundamental principle enshrined in both Nigerian law and international human rights standards.